The MX-30 was a milestone for Mazda. That's because it was Mazda's first full battery electric car ever. It was a crossover that was only available in sunny California, and it debuted for the 2022 model year. But it got mixed reviews, and it saw its shares of fans and haters. But recently, Mazda announced the 2023 MX-30 REV, and this time, it's coming with a rotary engine. Today, we're looking at how it works and how it differs from the battery electric version. We'll also see if the rotary mix is a good thing, and whether this can help change the game for Mazda's electrification plans. There's been a lot of hype about Mazda's plans to add a rotary engine to the MX-30. But here's the thing. It's just a compact rotary engine, and it doesn't even power the car. Actually, it's a range extender. In other words, it powers the charger to add more battery capacity. Think of it like a generator. That's why some consumers are saying Mazda's rotary engine is just a marketing gimmick. Basically, Mazda took the EV, then added a rotary combustion engine, and turned it into a plug-in hybrid, or P-H-E-V. If you look inside the Mazda MX-30 e -Sky Active REV, you'll find a 17.8 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery, a 160 PS electric motor, and the new 830 cc single rotor 70 PS Wankel rotary engine. Now, I don't know if you remember, but back when Mazda first announced this iconic Wankel rotary engine will be making a comeback, Mazda fans got excited. But then they clarified that the rotary engine would come in the form of a range extender for an electric vehicle. In the battery electric version of the MX-30, the battery powers the motor, which then turns energy into moving at the wheels through the car's drivetrain. Pretty simple, right? But the problem with the MX-30 BEV is that it's powered by a 35.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. Tiny battery means tiny range. I'm talking only about 124 miles, and that's on a good day. To put that into perspective, just look at the EVs that the MX-30 is competing against. Take, for example, the Hyundai Kona Electric. It offers more than double that range. On top of that, the Kona Electric Electric has a slower starting MSRP, so it's a no-brainer which EV offers more value. If you're wondering why Mazda even released to the market an EV with lower range, well, evidently, Mazda felt the driving range would be sufficient. Apparently, it did some research and found that the average commuter only travels 30 miles a day. So, from that perspective, it has 124 miles of range, which is plenty enough for those small trips. Anyway, I'm sure this all had a bearing on why Mazda went back to the drawing board. And now, its solution is to add a compact rotary engine that will serve as a generator to help with the EV's driving range. But now, remember, the rotary engine doesn't power the wheels of the MX-30 REV. It runs between 2,500 to 4,500 RPMs to generate more charge for the MX-30's onboard battery. And here's the beauty of it. It extends the EV's range from a measly 124 miles to an impressive 400 miles. So you can see it's quite a jump. But that's not the only change we'll see in the MX-30. Because of the addition of the rotary extender, the MX-30 REV is getting a smaller battery pack by small. I mean a 17.8 kilowatt hour battery pack compared to the 35.5 kilowatt hour battery pack in the battery electric version of the MX-30. To understand what this means, if we're to rely solely on the REV's smaller battery without the rotary engine extender, we're looking at 53 miles of range in electric only mode. Now, the rotary engine range extender on the MX-30 REV is super light. I'm talking 33 pounds lighter than RX-8's twin rotor Renesis. That's because the whole block is only 33 inches, and the single rotor's radius spans 4.7 inches. The MX-30 REV's rotary engine also has direct fuel injection instead of port injection. If you ask Mazda, it'll say it means the economy of the Wankel rotary tech is about 25% better than a normal rotary, and that carbon dioxide emissions are lower too. Mazda increased this rotary engine's compression ratio to 11.9 to 1 to help extend the engine's life. Mazda also made the apex seals thicker. These seals come with a new and specially developed coating to reduce wear and tear. And evidently, you can use the REV's rotary engine to generate electricity for emergencies, camping, or job sites. But let's clarify something else about the rotary engine. If you're a cult fan of the rotary engine, you're probably wondering if it can work on a new RX sports car. Well, the answer is no. At least for now. The thing is, for now, Mazda's priority is to electrify its lineup. That's just where the current focus is. And besides, they're having to play catch-up as it is, since they're a bit behind in the EV game. But now, that's all said. Keep in mind that the rotary engine is the symbol of Mazda. Consider, too, that there's almost a cult-like following of the rotary engine, which has grown over the years. Mazda executive Kota Masui has casually stated that it's an engineer's dream to have a sports car with a rotary engine. But he also said that right now, this isn't the time for it 
But who knows, maybe in the distant future, Mazda may reconsider expanding its focus yet again. So is a rotary range extender a good thing? Before we get to that, let's rewind a bit and look at the fundamentals of a rotary engine. The Wankel rotary engine was actually invented by Felix Wankel. He worked throughout the 1950s to develop a new engine that wasn't based on cylinders and pistons. And that's how he came to an engine that uses triangular rotors and oval-shaped housings. Here's how it works in general. The rotor revolves around the housing. A small pocket of air then expands into a larger pocket to create a vacuum. Air and fuel get injected into this vacuum through the intake ports on the combustion chamber. The air and fuel mixture is then compressed against the flat side of the housing. This combustible mixture gets ignited by two spark plugs, and then the exhaust gases are forced out at high pressure. Now, the Wankel engine was new, exciting, and innovative for its time, but it was also controversial and slowly started to fade away from the market in the 2000s. The main reason for this was due to laws and regulations, but not American or Japanese laws. Actually, it was due to European laws, primarily the strict Euro 5 emissions regulations. Mazda had to stop selling its RX-8 in Europe in 2010. It just couldn't meet the emissions regulations of Europe. The reason came down to inherent design flaws with a rotary engine. For example, the rotary engine has lower thermal efficiency than piston engines. That's because of its long combustion chamber, which often leads to unburnt fuel leaving the exhaust, which thereby causes the engine to backfire. If you remember the original Mazda Cosmos, is those things, you turn them off and bang, they'd backfire all the time. Now, rotary engines burn oil by design since oil gets injected directly into the combustion chamber. I'm talking about an oil guzzler. So you have to regularly check oil levels to keep the rotor lubricated properly. And it also means you'll see more yucky stuff come from the tailpipe, which is not good for the environment. Another thing that impacts emissions is the rotor ceiling. The thing is, the intake and combustion occur simultaneously, but in different parts of the housing. That's why the top of the housing is cooler while the bottom is hotter. The uneven temperature makes ceiling a lot harder. You can use coolant jackets to help even out the heat load and reduce the problem, but you can't eliminate it entirely. Even worse, because the rotary engine is more rare than common, it's not easy to find parts when repairs are needed. And even if you're able to find the right parts, you still need to find a mechanic who's skilled in fixing rotary engines, and sadly, there aren't that many of them out there. There's also the matter of city driving. When it comes to city driving, the rotary engine has a short lifespan between rebuilds and usually lasts less than 100,000 miles. Some RX-8 owners were able to get a longer lifespan out of the rotary engine, but it was usually the same people who mainly drove their vehicles on highways at steady speeds. All of this is to say, these are the main factors that contributed to the rotary engine dying out in combustion engine cars in recent times. That's not to say that rotary engines stink. Believe it or not, there are a few big advantages to using a rotary engine over a piston engine as a range extender. First of all, you got the size. Rotary engines are smaller than piston engines, so you don't need to design the car around the engine. Instead, it's the other way around. You can first optimize the primary parts of an EV, then decide where to place the rotary range extender. This also helps you improve the overall usefulness of the car's interior and cabin space. Another advantage is that the rotary engines are light. Here's the thing that not many people think about. Most owners of typical plug-in hybrid cars charge their cars at night. That means that most of the time they're plugging around a heavy piston engine, which drags down the car's fuel efficiency. On the flip side, when you have a small and light rotary engine as a range extender, wasting electricity isn't as much of an issue. Another advantage of the rotary engine is that it doesn't reciprocate. In other words, you don't get the engine vibration and car noises that you experience with piston engines. Now, that's not to say rotary engines are completely silent. They're not, but they're definitely quieter than a piston engine, and it's a more balanced engine with smoother power delivery. To appreciate the MX-30 REV, you have to understand the battery electric version of the MX-30 before it got the rotary range extender. The battery electric crossover attracted customers because it looked similar to the more popular CX-30, and for the most part, it was a safe car. On the NHTSA ratings, it received a maximum 5 stars on the frontal crash test for both the driver and the passenger. It also got 5 stars on all side crash tests, and 4 stars on the rollover risk test with a rollover risk of 11.6%. But Mazda sales took a real hit with the MX-30 battery electric car. In 2021, Mazda sold less than 200 MX-30s. For the last half of 2022, you couldn't even order an MX-30 because Mazda said it was sold out. But by year's end, Mazda sales of the MX-30 were just 300. Part of the problem was the battery electric crossover wasn't affordable. The base price started at $33,470, and that was $11,000 higher than its rival, the Hyundai Kona Electric, for example. 
The other problem with the MX-30 battery electric vehicle was the 35.5 kilowatt hour battery, which had to be charged at least every 100 miles. That's 36 minutes on a level 3 charger, which is a DC fast charger, or a little less than 3 hours on a level 2 chargers for 20% to 80% charge. Since most charging stations are typically level 2, obviously, family road trips could be a drag. That's why the 2023 MX-30 REV now comes with a rotary range extender to bump up the driving range of the car beyond rival cars. Anyway, suffice to say, the MX-30 REV will up its own game. And Mazda fans are already asking the big question. And that's whether the new MX-30 REV will be coming to the U.S. Well, there was a time when Mazda said it would be in the works. But if you ask Mazda today, it's a different story. All we know for sure is that the battery electric version is available in California and only California. So far, there's no solid news on whether the MX-30 REV will someday set its wheels on American soil. But now you tell me, does the addition of the rotary range extender change your opinion of the Mazda MX REV? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.